Now, the UN's nuclear watchdog has warned that safety at Ukraine's Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is deteriorating after a nearby drone strike. The International Atomic Energy Agency's team on site has reported intense military activity over the past week, very close to the facility. Russia seized the plant in 2022. Its Russian managers accuse Ukraine of being behind this explosion on its perimeter road. Zaporizhia has faced repeated attacks during the war, with each side blaming the other. So how can nuclear safety be prioritized in an ongoing conflict? I put this question to Professor Najmadeen Mishkati. He's an expert on safety at nuclear power plants. Unfortunately, this is not the first time that uh, a nuclear plant is in the war zone and being targeted. The first time happened after a few days of Russian invasion of Ukraine. It was the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which is the largest plant in Europe, and it has six uh, reactors. Unfortunately, this is the second time. I think now Russia is facing the same dilemma and predicament that Ukraine faced after the invasion. And I think this is the most dangerous, I can repeat it again, the most dangerous firefight which is happening in Europe. And when you mention the most dangerous firefight, are you referring to the Zaporizhia plant, which is what the IAEA has issued a warning about? I would say that both. In the case of Zaporizhia plant, it's very dire because we had a major fire in Zaporizhia plant in the spent fuel, uh, sorry, in the cooling tower, the, the cooling pond that stores uh, water and we use that for cooling. The spent fuel uh, pool is now uh, draining and the, the level is going down. And also its electricity is, uh, has been interrupted many times. The, the, the Zaporizhia, as the director general of IAEA and his heroes, heroic work of the, its uh, team in uh, Zaporizhia reported this morning, is really is being attacked again by a drone that uh, had explosive and it landed uh, near the perimeter of the plant. That is the Zaporizhia. And now in the case of Kursk, there is a lot of reports that Ukraine may want to uh, uh, capture that, to use that as a bargaining chip. And again, I hope Kursk has a better fate than Zaporizhia. Now, the Zaporizhia plant, it seems, is in cold shutdown, which means the reactors are in effect not working. Does that mean there's no risk of a nuclear disaster at the plant then? That's the only silver lining of Saporizhia that the four, six reactors, they are all in cold shutdown, but we still need electricity for the spent fuel pool. Spent fuel pools are under the containment building. However, my personal biggest worry is the dry cask area that they keep when the, the uh, fuel assembly gets to a lower temperature, they move it from the spent fuel tool to this dry cask. And dry cask storage area is outside of the uh, containment building. And unfortunately, if they be attacked by a, a aerial bombardment or by a missile, if those dry cask cracks open, then we may have the release of uh, radioactive material. In Thank that you. case, the risk at Zaporizhia is still is very high, but the reactors, of course, are in the cold shutdown, but still we need some decent level of electricity to run the cooling pump still for the cold shutdown reactor and the right. spent fuel pool. A very concerning con con situation there, for sure. Thank you so much for explaining that so clearly to us. Nuclear safety expert Najmadeen Mishkati.